So anyway, this is uh, our Thursday night night meeting for Decision Ministries, and uh, uh, this rascal next to me right here is Jay Hopton, and from uh, from the big city. Um, I'm, I'm not even Bovina, Texas. Bovina. Yeah, Bovina. I, I bet everybody in our audience knows exactly where that is. You know. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Jay is one of the guys that's uh, a part of our Tuesday morning uh, group over in Hereford, and uh, he travels from uh, for about forty miles to get there. So he's one of those uh, road warriors that uh, travels all night and then tra then travels all the way over to to be with us in the morning. So it's, he's got quite a bit going on. Anyway, Jay, you brought uh, some uh, some real interesting comments to that group the other day, and so I'm kind of anxious to see what you have to uh, share with us tonight. So I'm going to uh, always just be a little ways away from you, not so if you need anything, we'll just holler at me. I'll probably switch the picture over to you uh, a little later on, but. Uh, let me just share a couple of quick things, do a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. That is that we always have a uh, helps line that's available. And that number is uh, 806 area code 338-2929. We have people that uh, will answer that phone call if you'll call in, you need some ministry of some sort. They're all spirit-filled and well able to minister to you and with you, agree with you on things, pray for you. Um, just just uh, share the gospel with you do whatever whatever you need done so and they're great and they uh we have people that speak english and spanish so either way you can make that choice at uh, the little menu when you call in and uh, it'll get you in contact with somebody that that can pray and, and interact with you that kind of puts the third dimension jay and i are two dimensions and and that brings you into the picture to where you can actually interact with us a little bit and so we're just um, thrilled to have that available and uh, so anyway we have um, next week um, I'll be having uh, Pastor Tom Malone, who is uh, a pastor here in Amarillo, and he also is one of those guys that shows up every Tuesday morning, and uh, so there are a lot of them anyway. So we're looking forward to him uh, being on next week, and we're just we're just excited. That we've got some really good people lined up all through the year, and it's going to be it's going to be a great year. So I'm excited about the new year, and uh, uh, like the little sign says back here, that was a word that I got is breaking through in 22. That's 2022 is a breakthrough year. And I really believe that that's, that's a, a little broader than what the simplicity of the statement. But uh, I believe that's going to be some of those, some things that you're going to be able to push through and break through. It, it may not be an easy breakthrough, like, you know, running through a, a, a ribbon at the end of the race. It may be more like take your take your, um, you know, sledgehammer and beat this thing down <laughs> kind of breakthrough. But I do believe that God is, is, is bringing us to breakthrough in this year. So um, there's a lot of things been going on. A lot of people have been um, kind of suffering under the attack of the en enemy. We know certainly a lot of people that are kind of would qualify for that. And I really do believe that you're going to break through. I believe you're going to be successful uh, in getting through whatever it is that the enemy has put up and uh, and then calling his hand on it and demanding that he repay you seven times and so that's kind of what we're encouraging people to do is just stand there and get strong with the enemy and tell him you're going to have to pay back everything you've stolen buddy you're going to have to pay it back because i'm breaking through this year i'm going to be on top i'm blessed and you're not that's the way it's going to work End, end of discussion. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, Jay, I want to bring you in and, uh, and just welcome you and uh, introduce you to the group here. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> tell us a little bit about Bovina, Texas, and a little bit about you, and then we get, we'll get the ball rolling here. All righty, Fred. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for uh, the honor of having me on. It's just a joy to be able to share with uh, those who, uh, are aware of you and it's uh, I know your ministry is touching a lot of people I'm, I'm looking forward to it 
uh, Bovina, Texas. I love. I'm not even sure what the population is, but it's not very. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an interesting situation. I was actually living in California until about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Then, of all things, the COVID COVID pushed me out of California because you couldn't work anywhere, basically. But I'd always had a calling back to this area, the East Texas or West Texas, excuse me, and and the state of New Mexico and Bovina is just right on the border there. So it works, uh, works pretty good. And the Lord brought me here, uh, kind of out of the middle of, uh, it was, it was, it was kind of, a, like, it, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. You're doing good. Okay. It was, it was both an old thing and yet a new thing. I moved because of COVID. But the Lord had always told me about 25, 30 years ago that he was calling me here, that I was called to this area, that he had a plan for this area. And I pastored a small church in Clovis, New Mexico, which is not far from here, about 25 years ago. Uh, so anyway, I just uh, wound up back here, and, and now I've, I've met the group in Hereford that is such a Beautiful. I've never, I've never experienced such unity, such joy, and such, such peace, and such the of the presence of God in, in a group like that. And it's just beautiful. Um, I'll just go right into what I what I've talked today. I want to talk about. I, I love what you just said about uh, people reclaiming what the enemy has stolen and what is stealing from them right now. Because we're in it, we're coming into a time where the body of Christ is becoming aware of how muted, how muffled, how how uh, blinded they have been, and how the enemy has tried to shut down our voice. And I would submit to you that our voice is literally the weapon that will dig us out of whatever hole we've been in. Our words can change the situation. Jesus, uh, back in uh, Genesis 1, we have a mandate from God. God has just created Adam and Eve. He started everything. It says, this God, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth so basically we were given a mandate back back way back almost at the foundation of the world when mankind was raised up to take dominion take authority over this earth well you you wonder how in the world did Adam and Eve do that? You know, they were living in a Garden of Eden, and all of the animals had actually been created before them. Well, we were created in the image of our God, and the way God spoke them and brought them into existence is by his word. He spoke them into existence. He spoke each of those animals into existence. And Adam and Eve, because they're built in the image of God, created in the image of God, use the same facility. That is our weapon, our weapon, our authority, our mandate, our way to subdue and have dominion over the earth is in our mouths. It's in our mouths. We have the ability through our mouths to, to subdue the earth, to cause everything to come into dominion and authority. He gave us governmental authority over nations. If we would, once we rise up and understand that, nothing in this world has authority or dominion over us. As long as we use our mouth, we can not conform to this world, but we actually cause this world to conform to what we're speaking, just as God did. He spoke into existence things that were not. That's what we're called to do right now is call speaking into existence 
those things that are not. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, we're, right now we're seeing a lot of things that are not as they should be. We need to fight against that. We need to pull out our offensive weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, and speak into existence that which is not, which is peace, joy, and righteousness. The kingdom, the kingdom is coming to the earth, and we bring it to earth through our mouths. Um, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Those who love it will eat its fruit. So basically, if you if you kind of break that that verse down, it says either death or life is in the power of our tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruits. That's a little bit, it, it seems a little bit odd there, but basically what it's saying is those who love life will speak it. Those who love the truth will speak it, and they will love what comes to them. They will love what, what the atmosphere or the kingdom, or when they're speaking life, they love what comes back, what they receive when they speak life. Those who speak death, and unfortunately, that's what we've seen for like two years now. We've seen a lot of death. We've seen a lot of uh, violence, wasting, and destruction. And there's another verse in Isaiah that talks about that. Violence, wasting, and destruction should no, no longer be heard in our land if we control our mouths. If we speak to things that are and tell them that they are not, and what is really happening is life. We speak as as... The Lord, as our Father God, the creator of all, spoke into the earth when it was dark. It was formless. It was chaos and confusion and doubt and unbelief. He spoke life into it. He said, light, let there be light. And ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, just start speaking light. Just tell the world around you, tell your atmosphere, tell your heart, your mind, your soul, light be, light be. We have that authority within us. And it's, it, it's not a simple thing. Uh, well, it's simple, actually. It's simple. It's so simple that so many Christians don't get it because it's just in our mouths. Everything that we need is right here in our mouths. It's already given us the authority, the dominion, and the ability to redo everything that's around us. But as we speak it, we must start believing it in our heart. Uh, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and they were doing their usual uh, obnoxious decrying of how Jesus was, he said a, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things but i say to you that for every idle word that men may speak they will give account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned i truly believe that that is true every day we can speak words that bring justification, that justify us. We can cause, we can speak into our hearts the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, which justifies us. Or we can speak the condemnation. We can speak, we can continue. You know, it's a lot of Christians have been taught all their lives just to confess their sins, just to tell it like it is. It's, you know, just, just be honest with God and with men. And it's true to a degree. However, we have, unfortunately, the church has come into a place. Sorry about the train. The church has come into a place where we are continually confessing our sins. 
we're continually speaking about what's wrong with us. Oh, I just don't know why I did that. Or I, I just don't, I can't seem to find success. Or, oh, the, the world's just so tough. I don't know how I could get through. We're speaking death when we speak that. We, speak, we think we're being honest when we continually fess up, confess our failures to God. But God already knows our failures. And yes, it's, it's honest to come to him once and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I did that. I confess my sin and I repent and I turn back from it. But then mount up, mount up on wings of eagles, mount up with your voice, with your tongue and start speaking what God speaks about you. That's what the Lord is speaking to me right now. As we, if we will get into the word, the word of God is living and powerful. Sharpen an 82 edged sword, able to divide between the division of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. Once we speak that word, that truth, and then hold fast to our confession, once we speak that, then God, our Father God, watches over His word to perform it. He watches over His word to perform it. So basically, what we do is just pull out the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into a place where God is speaking his promises to you. Start speaking those things. Start becoming aware of what God's speaking. And what, as you speak, it forms in your heart. You lay up the word of God in your heart by speaking. I believe a lot of us have been hoodwinked to some degree by the enemy because we believe well, if we read the Bible daily, if we meditate on it, it's good. But that is not, I, I think that's good. I think that is changing our hearts to a degree. But he gave us the gift of the ability to change not only our hearts, but all of our atmosphere by speaking the truth about what God has said to us, what God formed us and created us to be, and also what's going on in the world. Okay, then there's a scripture in Isaiah 41, 14, 15. And Jesus was talking to the Israelis, the, the uh, Israel. He said, fear not, fear not, you worm, Jacob. Now, that's what a lot of us look like. We, right now, we're, we're crawling around in the dust of our own existence, and we're feeling like worms. But he said, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and the glory and glory in the Holy One of Israel. I'm, I'm just <laughs> going to prophesy to each of you, those of you who are listening, God is giving you sharp new teeth. He's giving you a, a warfare mentality, a warfare in your mouth. Pull out the the double-edged sword of God, put it to use, and make form, conform your world and your and even your own heart into who you are, who God formed you and made you to be. Stop listening to what the devil whispers in your ear. You are not who who you think you are. You are who God says you are. That same thing, it says, not only do you thresh things in your heart and change your heart, but you will thresh mountains and beat them small. The mountains, as anyone that's, that's really been paying attention, the mountains are the mountains of society. What we're looking at right now is religion, family, education, government, media, arts and entertainment, and business. That is the mountains of society that the enemy has built up. Right now, the enemy is pretty much in control of all the mountains of the earth. But God said he was going to change that. He was going to make the mountains conform to his truth and his understanding. So as we come into that place where 
we start rising up like like uh, like strong men waking strong men and women awaking from a sleep we take up our places with the victors that's where we are right now ladies and gentlemen take up your place with the victors pull out the word of god sharpen your sword sharpen the teeth of god and start speaking what god is saying about you one last scripture Psalm 149, 6 through 9. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people, to, to bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. This is the honor that we've been given. We have the ability through our mouths to pick up the high praises of God, put them in our mouths, and a double-edged sword in our hand. That double-edged sword, in many places in both the Hebrew and the Greek, where it says double-edged, that edge is like a double mouth. As we speak words that God has already spoken, as we begin to speak words that he's spoken, then <laughs> actually Holy Spirit will will begin putting up all that word that you've laid in your heart picking it up and then breathing it out and as he breathes out the revelation the revelation of god it it scatters the enemy it beats the mountains makes them small makes their hills like chaff oh we're looking we're we're actually at a beautiful time in the earth if if we look at it in the natural it's like Isaiah 60. Darkness covers the earth. Deep darkness the people. But guess what? The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. And kings, nations shall come to your rising. To speak your truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I promise you, God is going to conform this earth to his will and not to the enemies. Wow. Thank you. Hey, man, pretty, pretty cool. Mr. J, we've got, uh, give me just a second here. Let me click back in. <laughs> oh, sure. there's, there's a lot going on there. I was, I was trying to frantically take some notes while you were uh, uh T teaching there that, that's good you know um the speaking speaking and declaring and decreeing is is really i mean that's the design you're you're i think really really strong on point uh mr j on account of uh, you know I, I really truly believe that the kingdom of god is voice activated um, it is if, if you want to operate in the kingdom of god it's a it's a voice thing there is definitely, um, you know, connections to to the heart and what we and then and that and it says whatever you believe, it drops down into your spirit out of the abundance of the heart, then the mouth speaks, and so it's what we're believing, not not superficial, not superficially, you know, not everything that we that we kind of put into our mind drops down into our believer what i call our believer um, but whatever gets to the believer that's what we start speaking that's what we start saying and uh that there, there's definitely a heart and mouth connection here <laughs> Amen. Amen. so what we had i love i love what you said speak light and that is to speak the word of god speak the truth speak light speak the good news and uh whenever we do that especially when we speak the word of god uh it is light it tells us that we're the light of the world and uh, we believers and so we light up the world by proclaiming the the preach the kingdom we're preaching the kingdom Hallelujah. preaching the good news of jesus and so whenever people hear that you know if it drops down into their spirit and they begin to speak it then they can have what they say i think i'm mark 11 you know 22 through 24 uh go read that you know it's a, that's kenneth hagan that spent a whole lifetime of ministering only one one verse but uh it, 
it basically says, you know, have have faith in God. And then it goes on to say that, uh, you know, don't doubt what, but, but whatever, don't, don't let doubt get in your heart and mess up things because doubt and unbelief really nullifies the word of God and makes it, brings it really to no effect whatsoever in life. So it, you have to believe the word and then you have to get it in your mouth and speak it. And so, man, I'm telling you that I, I, I just affirm everything you said tonight, uh, Jay, and and um, all of us need to be writing down declarations, writing down what we want uh, from, you know, and, and then begin to be where Bible says we're kings and priests. So we need to be declaring and decreeing all the time, uh, but we need to be doing that with uh, with full faith in what we believe. And, you know, well, <laughs> that's good. We do, we talk about a lot of these things over at Hereford, and uh, like you said, there's just a, a, a grand atmosphere there that lets us uh, really commune and fellowship and kick back and forth and, and learn of the Lord. So it's all good, but I think you're really, really hard on something that uh, that is really, really important at this moment and in, at this hour. I think a lot of people are getting beat up because they're not speaking to things amen amen fred uh, just right quick you know when i was first born again and that was not until i was 35 years of age i uh i immediately went into the the word of faith movement i i mm. and i i love i love kenneth hagan i love kenneth copeland i love what god spoke to them through them but i got really turned off by it because i I just, I just believed, I, I sort of, over about two years, I, I put a lot of money into the church over that and, and invested, you know, ble believing that God was going to bring it all back. And I yeah. tried, tried to use it as a tool. And that's not sure. what God meant. And, and I think that's the danger. So I want to speak to anybody that's been turned off by that, that confession word of confession movement don't don't be turned off realize that it is the truth but it needs to be used with wisdom with insight with understanding yeah Amen. i'll tell you what god, god is doing wonderful things with it now as we begin to mature in the use of the words of our mouths yeah yeah, I totally agree. There's a, that's, you know, we kind of, kind of came from Baptist over to charismatic and, and word of faith and, and, uh, and then kind of come full circle. And uh, I don't know, I don't know who exactly lines up with, with our group any better than, I mean, for me, um, uh, I like Andrew Womack. He's got a, I think he's got a real nice, he's got a good balance between oh, good. faith. Uh, but there's, uh, you need, do need to remember that grace and faith are on the same side of the scale. <laughs> you know, they're not opposite, but there's still some balance sure. within, within the grace and, and faith movement. Um, I think in the grace movement, they, some of them, some, a few of those guys have kind of moved a little too far and kind of picked up a little bit of, um, uh, you know, well, if, uh, if, if, if we can't sin, you know, if, 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 if sin doesn't matter, well then, you know, let's just go sin a lot. Well, you know, you need to get born again because that's not, that's not what you need to, to believe at all. Well, on the other side, you know, the faith thing is, is, uh, you know, it, it, some of those guys went too far with, you know, name, name it and claim it. And, and, uh, there's, there's solid truth on both sides of that, but there's a balance in the middle with, with, with both of those. I, I have discovered that every single road that exists has two bar ditches. <laughs> And you can oh, fall off into either one beautiful. of them. Just, just, just stay centered with the truth of the Word of God, and you'll be good. Well stated. Well stated. I totally agree. And, and uh, it's uh, it was the enemy that got into the middle of that, and just caused mostly young, immature Christians like I was at the time to over overuse it and over decide. And, and I'm so yeah. grateful now, thirty years later. Yeah, sure that it that i went through that because 
when he brought me back and started telling me that this really is real. You can change the world by using your tongue. I was like, oh, God. And I've I've really been against that for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I understand that's it. That's the way he works sometimes. Is, is to, that's to, true. To bring us through bring us through the ditch, like you say, and bring that's us true. out on the highway of holiness by using what brought us into the ditch. <laughs> Only God yes, can sir. do that. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's that's pretty pretty hard to uh jump on everything, but it's uh uh, the, I, I love your scripture that you, that you mentioned in Pro, uh, out of Proverbs talking about life and death and the power of the tongue. And, I, you know, I just want to highlight that word power because your, your tongue is powerful and how, how we uh, use it in, in the position of kings and priests. Because that's how they operate. They, that's how a king, and that's how the kingdom works. Is the king decrees a thing, declares a thing, or the or the priest will will declare a thing. And in either way, all of the kingdom rallies to make that happen. And so we have the entire kingdom of heaven that comes around and tries to fulfill the declarations that we make with our mouth. And so what we say is, I mean. It, uh, we, 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 if we knew the power that we had with what we say, uh, we would be very careful with it. And uh, as you grow and mature in the Word of God, you begin to learn more and more and more what you have to say versus what God has to say that you can put into your mouth is going to produce a lot more. <laughs> amen. Amen. You know, there's a, <clears throat> a verse that says... Uh, even idle words will be judged. Will yeah, be judged by right. the idle words that we speak. And you yeah, know, that's that's, true. That, that, that really puts the fear of God in me because so many of us, I think the enemy of society, whatever, has trained us to say yeah. things like, well, that, that just tickles me to death. <laughs> Those are not yeah. only... I, <laughs> that's, that's not only idle words, but it's actually words of the enemy because now now i don't think that means of course you're not going to die Im immediately or anything like that but our i believe that our our words if they don't conform to what the truth is then we start putting uh immature or idle words just put it, words that don't really that we don't actually believe into our heart then, of Absolutely. course, our heart gets a little, uh, gets this, gets kind of disconnected from us. And we start to, our heart just starts thinking, well, I can't believe a word that comes out of this guy's mouth. And, you know, who wants that? That, that is, uh, uh, that's, that's why we, we need to start watching carefully the words that we speak. Mm -hmm. And not in a, not in a religious, uh, don't beat yourself up or anything like that. Not in that way. No. But just be aware. Well, just think, our father, our father spoke that every word that came out of his mouth would not only ret not return to him void, but it would accomplish that for which he spoke. How, yeah. Can you imagine, Fred, coming into that place? Yes, sir. We are, we are the sons of the daughters of God. We are, we have the ability to not speak a word that doesn't prosper. We cannot speak a word that doesn't cause Sorry, yeah. the earth to conform to what we speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way we can do that is get our words fully, truly aligned with our Father. And He wants sure. to speak. Oh, he, he, he needs to speak. He wants us to be able to speak what He's speaking because then He has, He can send angels to make those words be performed. Yes, sir. You know, I, I truly believe it. it and, and the more we, the more we speak what God's, you know, if, the more we say what God says, uh, or the more we find a word 
and then decree that word, you know, put that word around what we're aiming for, what we need to be saying. Uh, if you're talking about healing, well, then find healing scriptures and start decreeing and declaring those healing scriptures over your body or over your friend or whoever needs healing. And if somebody needs to get born again, we'll preach the gospel, the good news, and and let it come out of your mouth and and and. Uh, it's going to do a better job. It says, you know, God goes and performs His word, not necessarily our word. And so when we're we're begging and and trying to get God to do something He's already done, like save us, uh, we're we're wasting words and we're not saying what God said. I, I preached a whole series of sermons one time had this name and, and the title of it was Talk God Talk. <laughs> and that's it's basically just say what God says, you know, find find what God says about whatever it is and apply that word and let and, and speak those words because it's the the word of God yeah. is the seed. And so what you do with your mouth is you sow the seed of the Word of God. And it goes out and it does what it's supposed to do. It, 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 it's just like a farmer plants a seed in the ground and expects it to come up. Uh, if, if it's a corn seed, it's going to come up a corn plant. It's not going to come up potatoes. It's gonna, so whenever you find that Word that's specific and you speak it, you're sowing that seed into the atmosphere. And, and God's able to raise that up he's, he's a, that's something that's a life and it can grow up and produce and that's that's the way you kind of got to see the word of god it's a seed amen you know um tim sheets came up with it but he, that guy tim sheets is is an apostle in uh, ohio and he just he's written some beautiful books mostly about angels but he speaks a lot about decrees also and, mm -hmm. and one of the things he came up recently with is that in the message bible when uh, the angel gabriel is standing with with mary and introducing her to the fact that she's about to have a baby and that it's going to be the son of god it actually says in the Message Bible, the translation of what, what his words were, were an embryonic message. Oh, no, an embryonic sermon. So the words we speak are like a conceived, an already conceived embryo. Uh, well, not, no, I guess, I guess that's not true. <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works. It's a little above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> The words we speak do conceive things in the earth. And when they connect with, with uh, the embryo or whatever, I don't want to get too deep into that, but it, it changes things. It changes, especially, uh, he says time and time again, if you, whatever he is laid up, as we lay his word up in our hearts, our hearts are like gardens and they spring forth whatever you put in, into them, right. especially if it's, if it's the word of God, then, then you're going to have, if you speak what God says about you, man, it's going to happen. If you and, and continually, you know, and, and the embryonic sermon, let's say it's an embryo. It must be nurtured. It must be fed. You know, it, it must, it must continually be taken care of because an embryo that's just, you know, if it's like a prophetic word. If you get a prophetic word and you just say, oh, that's nice, and just lay it aside and never go back to it and never speak it and never uh, work with it, meditate on it, believe for it, then it's probably not going to do much. The prophetic word, even if it's a true prophetic word, only has the power that you allow it to have in your heart. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, that's powerful, folks. And uh, like I said earlier in, in the broadcast, there's a there's a phone number that you can call because God may be, um, you know, pricking your heart a little bit or you want somebody to agree with you to pray for somebody else or or you just need a little bit of ministry yourself. I uh, call that number street area code 806-338-2929. 
and uh, let those folks help you. One more time, area code 806. It's a USA number only. I know we have some foreign folks that watch regularly, but uh, it's just for the USA. I'd like to have an overseas number as well. Working on that still. <laughs> I'm finding that difficult. But uh, 806 338 2929, call that number. Um, Jay, before we close out, I want to—I really want to encourage you to just uh, pray over the folks here and and extend a blessing and just 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 kind of speak into their life before we uh, wrap up here. If you would do that, absolutely, hallelujah, Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for this time together. Let's just. I ask that you, Holy Spirit, just, we speak to the, the wind, mm. the wind of your spirit, Lord, blow, the wind of God blow from the north, south, east, and west, awaken yeah, thank you, Lord. your people thank you, Lord. to who you are and who they are, awaken yes, throughout this region, throughout the nation, throughout the nations of the earth, yeah. the children of God with high praises of God in their mouth and a mm. double-edged sword in their hand. Lord, let them start not conforming to this world, but causing this world to conform to what they speak from their mouths. Give them intuition. Give them revelation, insight, and understanding. Yeah. Wisdom. Let wisdom flow through you, Holy Spirit, and let your revelation flow through their mouths, flow through their mouths. Mm. Yes, that yes. Their worlds will begin to come into alignment with what they speak. And bless Fred and Irene and, and uh, everyone involved with this, everyone that's been on the on this uh, program. And thank you, Father, for what you're doing in us and through us and raising up your children for such a time as this. Amen. 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 <laughs> that's awesome. Well, uh, once again, we will uh, remind you that next week we have uh, Tom Malone that's going to come on, and he's he's a he's a great man of God, and uh, I want to uh, just I want I want to recall one other point that you brought up, Jay, that's really powerful, and that is a, uh, that the word uh, and when we when we begin to decree and declare things, it's it's our, it's our our weapon. We literally can use the, our words as a weapon against the enemy. And so when we speak uh, with authority, um, that's, that's how Jesus sent out and equipped his, his disciples. So he sent out the 12. He said, go and heal the sick, cast out demons, and preach the kingdom. There's the three instructions he did. He, that was before Acts. But so, you know, every Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, any, any, any believer, sure. every believer has this authority in his, in his or her mouth to do those sure. three things. To do those three yeah. things, you can you can heal That's the good. sick, you can cast out the demonic, and you can you can preach the kingdom of God. And I I, I just I just uh, you know encourage you to to rise up in that authority because what comes out of your mouth is very powerful. If you're a son of God, a daughter of God, if you've been born again, you have that power. And uh, thank you again, Jay, for sharing that with us, man. That's that's powerful. We're uh, I just encourage everybody to really lock that in to uh, give yourself a mind picture of how really powerful the Word of God in your mouth really, really, really is. So um, we're going to sign off for now. But Jay, thanks again, a million man. We just I appreciate you so much. That was awesome. <laughs> thank you for having God. me, Fred. God bless you all. God is good, isn't he? All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.